Jump. Yes. Hello. There you go. That's huge, guys. That's huge. And that jump is going to directly affect math because now they're getting more proficient in reading. Okay. So I'm very interested to see what shows up today when we have our next informational test. But I, I, I feel as though we're going to have some numbers. Um, one thing I've added on here is our ESC mastery numbers and our ELL mastery numbers. And they are going up exponentially. That's huge. So we're going to continue to have those conversations and we're going to start to really look at that lowest quartile specifically as we go forward and as we're planning those teaching strategies, those monitoring strategies, and how we're engaging those students. Okay. Now for fourth math, we're here. Um, one thing that is the first thing I want to talk about is this test is missing. Did we complete this test? We just took it yesterday. Okay. Just took it yesterday. Okay, perfect. As soon as it's in, I will upload that and have it in there, okay? Um, now, we are struggling a little bit, but we already knew that. We already knew that these kids were coming in super low. These are very different concepts, okay? And we, we, we've seen this. So I don't want you to get too disheartened from seeing these numbers because overall, we really didn't go down too much, but we want to compare just like with the literature to literature and informative to informative, we want to compare our standards that are grouped together, together. So, you know, the standards are a little bit different, but you have some that are intertwined. So for you guys, it's really looking at, when we go into um, performance matters and we look at that data, that student analysis <coughs> data, you can really compare standard to standard and that growth, okay? And the so, other thing I just want to point out real quick is if you look at the percent tested guys, that can truly affect the overall per average that is mm -hmm. going on there. You'll notice initially at the beginning, we had a lot of issues with Skyward, the uh, schedules weren't up and ready and, and good to go. So you'll notice the percent tested does not necessarily match that 90 or above. We like to hit 95, but it's a little more accurate when we get into the 90s. When we look at the 80s, that might not be as accurate and kids skew the data one way or the other. The other thing I want you to keep in mind, guys, is as fourth grade as a whole, um, just to remind you that when we look at iReady DOI, I believe fourth grade um, on or above grade level, was around 10%. So if you look at how we are performing, we, uh, on the second test on 10-4, granted, we're not comparing apples to apples because that was overall, and this was specific to certain standards, but if we are scoring above what our BOY data was, our kids are moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind, even though our percentage might be lower, it's not under what we initially tested. So just, you know, again, Ms. Mrs. Pascal talks about, Ms. Pascal talks about um, not being discouraged. Know that you're seeing progress. It might not be as fast as we want to, but we're also not seeing that we're going in the opposite direction. So the kids are acquiring some of those skills, okay? And if you guys want me to, to add in the BOI data in between those two, kind of where you guys took it, so you can see that growth next to each other, I'm more than happy to do that. Just let me know if that's what, if you'd like me to. It's easy, pull and ask, okay? Um, I really want to focus though on this ESC because we are at zero, zero. <coughs> so as we go forward and we start to plan, what specifically are we doing to engage those students who have a little bit extra struggles? Or to scaffold for those students. Because remember, we've got the twofold, right? We can do engage, we can also do the scaffold piece. And then our ELLs. So if this is something we want to look at and have more of our resources here and at the district level come in, help us with that, let me know. Um, because that's that's what that's why we have all these resources available to us is to make sure that we are pinpointing and that we have the strategies in place as teachers to help the students. Okay? And then last but not least, we have science. And again, you're making games. So 14 to 25 percent. It's a big jump. I'm going to tell you, any gain is a good gain. And that is a really good gain. Um, but again, we really need to focus on our ESC and our ELL students. So what are we doing 
and how are we utilizing the resources that we that we have available to us okay now as you go forward for you guys this is kind of an overall to see what the mastery was on that test but it doesn't show you by standard okay so i know some of you have kind of seen unified some of you haven't but we're going to take it a little bit deeper so if you have your computer you can actually follow along with me you're going to sign into launchpad Go down to Performance Matters. So you're going to sign in essentially just like the kids sign in to take a test. When you're here, you're going to see already some data kind of overall. But there's a couple of different things that you can look at. And we're going to start just with the student item analysis. So in your reports, you have your baseball report card, and this is where you can actually pull for your students. Um, you can pull by standard from each test, and if you wanted to, for you guys, if you just wanted to track standard 1.1 over three tests, you can pull just standard 1.1. It's scoreboard, kind of the same thing. Um, it's a little bit different because that one is a little bit, I'll show you, it's a little more in depth but we are gonna look at student item analysis for you guys. Let's do... <clears throat> so you can see by standard, and this is overall for fourth grade, in 2.4, we have 40% of our students in red, 23 in yellow. Green, blue, and black are all considered mastery. 